Good morning. Welcome back to City Line. With me, I have a fabulous individual who takes care of a wonderful team, who takes care of a very specialized, cherished population here in Tacoma. I'm talking to Jason Scales, who is the interim executive director for our beloved Tacoma Community House. Welcome back, my dear. Thank you very much for having me. It's great. I've been thinking so much about you. Um, as people know, I am a uh, political news junkie and I care very much about what happens um, across the pond in Ukraine. And I know that that has been something that Tacoma Community House from the get-go was uh, prepared to deal with. So first off, I want to back up a bit and let's talk about you're the interim executive director. Um, Lauren Walker Lee handed the baton to you and said, I am going to, to leave this in capable hands. And boy, was she right. How is the search going? So I, they're, they're close to having um, a permanent, well, nothing's permanent, but they're close to yes. having a new non-interim executive director. I think the goal is to have a decision by the end of the year and then make an announcement sometime around January. And have you put your hat in the ring for I have, this job? I have. It's been um, the last year of my life um, being the interim executive director has been crazy and stressful and wonderful. Yes. And um, getting the opportunity to be a part of that organization for 16 years like I have been and just having the last 12 months to be the leader and get to, you know, work with the staff and all, it's been a great honor for me. So wow. um, I've been, like I said, very honored to be there. It's been a wonderful experience for me. And um, I know whatever happens, Tacoma Community House will be in good hands for Absolutely. the long term. And the people who are making the decision are great people. They're smart people. So mm -hmm. it'll be a great um, next leader for the organization. Spoken like a 16-year, 17-year <laughs> veteran of Tacoma Community House. So let's talk about Ukrainian arrivals in Pierce County. Take us back, because this is such a gift to be talking to you, because we don't have to read it in the paper. I can ask you, do you remember the first Ukrainians that stepped foot in Tacoma Community House? I, I do. I, you know, it was, it was early in the year. It was, it was late February, and um, we had somebody who just walked into my office and said, there's, there's three Ukrainians here wondering what they can do, oh. right? And um, it was... we. We weren't necessarily ready for it on that day, mm -hmm. um, but it became a pretty steady stream over the next almost 10 months now. Um, Pierce County has seen over 1,600 Ukrainians resettle here since, um, since January 1st, but the vast majority of those since, since the war started, mm -hmm. um, and more are coming every day. Oh my gosh, 1,600. I knew you would know the number. Wow, so from three to 1,600, as you sit on the comfy couch. Um, so what is, I wanna to shift to Tacoma Community House and what it does for all immigrants, and then I wanna talk about what it has done uniquely for the Ukrainian immigrants. So just give us a rundown of the wonderful things that you do there. So we, we work in four core areas. The first one is education. If you wanna build a life in this country, English is important. Yes. And so um, building your English skills and being able to communicate at work to your kid's teacher, to the grocery store, to services through the city, right? English is an important skill that you need to do that. Um, also employment, we help um, mm -hmm. people find and maintain employment. So same thing. Two are connected. If you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, if you're building your life, right? You need, you need an income, you need a way yes. to build financial stability for yourself. Um, the third is immigration. So mm -hmm. another leg of that stability is you have status. You don't have to worry about the government coming in and saying you have to go back. Your life controlled by fear. Yeah. Yes. And so you have that stable, like, this is where I'm going to be. This is, this is my home. And that, you know, we help people become citizens. Mm -hmm. um, we help um, bring other family members over here as well. We do a lot of low cost um, immigration services. Oh. When you look at those four core things that you just said to us, does every immig immigrant group uh, need those four things, or is it is it a combination? It's, it's a combination, right? Not everybody needs everything. Some people come with English, like they've mm -hmm. they've they've had some resources and privilege in their country where they've had the ability to learn and go to school and maybe learn English. Some of them come with connections for jobs, you know. 
communities do a good job of, you know, welcoming others. And so sometimes it is, here's my cousin, I already have a job for you kind of thing. Yes. Right? And, um, you know, the immigration stuff and the status, almost everybody needs that because yes. it's, it's a, every couple of years you got to renew, every couple of years um, you may want to bring family members over. You also, citizenship is a, you know, a timeline thing. Yeah, boy, I mean, I, I, I can't even comprehend going through that and my English is because I was born here. I can't even comprehend being able to understand um, our government if you are coming in from a very different place in this world. Jason, describe the Ukrainian people to us. So they are quite the resilient and amazing group. Detail. And they've been through a lot. And you know what we've seen is, like I said, 1,600 coming in to the Tacoma Pierce County area, giving up everything, you know, changing their life on a dime to get here and build a new life, whether that's temporary before they want to go back when the war is over or if they decide to stay here and build their new life. The most amazing thing, the most amazing thing is the, the Ukrainians who are here, who've opened their doors and, oh. and um, welcomed their, you know, their f people from their country in. You know, the story, I, the story I tell everybody is a few weeks ago, we had a gentleman come in and say, hey, I need to sign somebody up for English class. And I called back to the, the person who runs that and does that work and wonderful person, amazing person, Charlene comes bouncing up all excited to get somebody else enrolled in class. She turns the corner, she sees the gentleman, their heads both go down <gasps> and she goes, you're back again. And he said, yes. And she says, how many families with you now? And he said, three. So this gentleman now had three other, three families living in his space and he was getting them set up in English with Tacoma Community House, with the English classes, with the immigration work, with the employment. And, and this, this guy, wonderful man, um, who went through our um, organization about 10, 12 years ago now, has three families staying with him and trying to support them and making sure they get what they need. And just, um, you know, the, the empathy that Charlene had and everybody had for this, he's like, I got Radical empathy. Yeah. yeah, the three families living there and all that. And so it's been, um, you know, they've come basically with a suitcase. They have to do a lot. They still have the trauma of what's going on as well. With the, the you know, PTSD yeah, from leaving I mean, there. they're still getting, you know, a lot of refugees that we see, the war's been done five, seven, mm -hmm. ten years. They've been out of the country for ten years before they get here. This group has, you know, it's still on the news. They're seeing their hometown on the news. They're getting calls. President from, of Ukraine was just in the yeah, White House. Yeah. yeah, they're getting calls about what's going on in their city. Friends and family members mm -hmm. dying. They're, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with the power grid over there. Like, they can't get a hold of their fr friends and family who are still there. So the stress is a day-to-day -day thing for them. And them coming to class to learn English, them looking to find work, them building their life here. It's incredible that they're able to do it with all that going on in their lives. And what a lesson of resiliency. You are right. They are resilient people. I mean, I've, I've, I thought about that watching just the news, but you have confirmed what I thought of this. And also that some people, once they come here, we have Russian families that have families in the Ukraine that they want to also reach out and help. So it's all hands on deck. So that leads me to ask the question, that gentleman, that was recognized that is still out there working for Tacoma Community House. How can we, how can people help like he's helping? Well, we've had, to, we've had to change a lot of the way we do things, right? So for example, we, in partnership with um, Pierce County and the Tacoma Pierce County Health Department, we held an event last Saturday where we had a, basically 150 families come through. Um, they got warm clothing, they got some hygiene products, we did some, they did some medical and immunization stuff. We've got them signed up for services as well through that, right? We've had to do some few distribution in, in partnership with the Emergency Food Network as well. Love them. We, we've had to change um, a lot of our, our services and what we traditionally do to meet the needs of this population. Um, it has been one of the great things. It's, like I said, one of, my, one of the reasons my year has been wonderful is watching the community step up to help um, the Ukrainians um, in all these things like yes. we've never done food distribution and we have a you know emergency through food network came through and helped us and basically told us how to do it and it's gone really great um, same with the event on Saturday which we're hoping to hold another event in late January early February as well yes. to do that 
But I mean, I think um, and how people can help is one, um, we have on our website a Ukrainian relief fund. Okay. Right. So one of the things we're trying to do is raise some funds and dollars that go directly to the either those families who've recently arrived or like the gentleman we've talked about yes. who's had to now support these three families. And feed them. <laughs> feed them, mattresses, warm yes. clothing, all that stuff. And so it's those kinds of things um, that we're doing and distributing that money. We've raised um, close to, we've been close to $16,000. The city's going to give us some money to do that as well, to get that money directly to like I said, recently relived Ukrainians yeah. or the families they're staying with. So d does that tie into the year-end campaign of Choose Hope? Yeah, and so that is our th that is our year-end campaign, Choose Hope, and there's no better um, example of the work we've done over this year is that um, with everything that's going on, there's been, for our staff, for the people who've come through our doors, there's been, a lot of, there's been a lot of struggle, there's been a lot of moments where you just shake your head, um, kind of in despair some days, yeah. but um, you choose hope. You choose on there getting things done. Um, you choose on moving forward. And we've seen, again, Ukrainians, staff, choose hope. That's like I said, talk about Charlene and this gentleman. They chose hope they to go and do the work and keep plugging along and make a difference in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And that's um, why we're hoping you'll people will support us we, in our UN campaign so we can help other people choose hope and when they have hope, help them move forward. That's right. Saying thank you to you doesn't seem like enough, but thank you for all of the love, devotion, and your time and your heart that you've put into Tacoma Community House. And let me tell you something. If they come and ask me who should be executive director, I'm pointing at you. Thank you very Jason, much. Jason, have a great holiday season. You too. Thank really appreciate you. having us on. When we come back, Brian Flint from Sound Outreach will be in the house. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back.